going to do with Edom? I want you to give me some what, what uh, Yahusha comes what? back, Isaiah 63, 63 and 1. The Most High is going to deal with Edom. When he deals with Edom, this place is over with. I'm going to show you that Edom is the target of Yahweh Shah, Isaiah 63 and 1. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 63 and verse 1. Who is that that cometh from Edom? Who is that that cometh from where? From Edom. Edom is the target. That's the bullseye of Mark. Yahusha is coming back to destroy Edom. They run the whole world. Amen? With dyed garments from Basra. With dyed garments from Basra. That this that is glorious in his apparel. Traveling in the greatness of his strength. That I might speak in righteousness. Mighty to say to save. Right, so when you look at that and you go to Revelation 19, it's talking about the same thing. It talks about him coming with a garment that's dipped in blood. So it's the same precept for this chapter. And the most High starts it off with Edom. So for people say that Edom is no longer here, they're crazy. Who else would your house be coming back to destroy? They got his people in captivity. Edom. Come on. Wherefore art thou, art thou red in thine apparel, in thy garments, like him that treadeth in the wine fan? Right, so Yahusha is going to stop him out like grapes. And the blood is going to be all over Yahusha's garment. When you read the Bible, that's in it. That's what they don't teach in the churches. They miss so many chapters in the churches, they don't want you to know. They want to keep you asleep. I have trodden the wine press alone. And of the people, there was none with me. For I will tread them in mine anger. Right, so this is going to be Yahushua's fight. Just like when he went to Egypt, did the Israelites fight against the Egyptians? Who did the fight? It was the angel of the Most High. So Yahushua was the angel. So when we say Yahushua, basically we say, save us God. That's basically what we're saying. Every time we say, Barakatha Yahweh Bashim Mashiach Yahushua, save us God. That's what we're saying. That's what the Israelites are saying. That's why I say Israelite prayer. Save us, God. Send your arm to save us. Yahweh shot. This is the book of Obadiah, verse 1. The vision of Obadiah, thus saith the Lord God concerning Edom. We have heard a rumor from the Lord, and an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye, ye and let us rise up against her in battle. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. So he made us small amongst the heathen, right? So read that, Ezekiel 7, 24. This is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 7, verse 24. Wherefore, I will bring the worst of the heathen. He said he's going to bring the worst of the heathen. Come on. And they shall possess their houses. I will also make the pomp of their strong to cease, and their holy places shall be defiled. That's what Obadiah was saying. He made us small amongst the heathen. Come on. This is the book of Zechariah, chapter 2 and verse 8. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, after the glory hath he sent me unto the nations which spoiled you. For he that toucheth you toucheth the apple of his eye. Give me that. Uh, go to um, Deuteronomy uh, 32 and um, 32 and 8. 32 and 9, actually. Yeah, it's going to say the same thing. So the Most High is saying, look, the children of Israel is the apple of my eye. I'm only coming for the children of Israel. You Negroes and Latinos better wake up, man. Because when he comes, he's coming for you. He's coming to save you. But those who are not doing right, he's coming to destroy you. He's going to start with the house of Israel. Which are you Negroes calling yourselves African Americans. He's going to start with y'all. It's Deuteronomy 32 and 9. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. He found him in, the de in a desert land and in the waste howling wilderness. He led him about. He instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. As the apple of his eye. So Israel is the apple of the Most High's eye. Come on. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 4, verse 22. And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. My what? Even my firstborn. So Israel is the firstborn. 
So always remember that. The most High is coming for his children that are on that sign. That's why we got that sign out. Right? That sign is telling you what's gonna happen in the next couple of years. If not if not sooner or if not later. But we know it's, it's coming soon. Come on. This is the wisdom of Solomon, chapter 19 and verse 22. For in all things, O Lord, thou didst magnify thy people and glorify them. Neither didst thou regard them lightly, but did assist them in every time and place. All right, so the Most High is going to assist us only if we cleave to him. Second Ezra chapter 2, and go to um, um, 45. 2 and 45. This is the book of 2nd Esdras, chapter 2, verse 45. He answered and said unto me, These be they that have put off the mortal clothing, and put on the immortal, and have confessed the name of God. Now are they crowned and receive palms. So these are the 144,000 that you read about in Revelation chapter 7, right? Read verse 44. Verse 44. So I asked the angel and said, Sir, what are these? This is Ezra. Ezra was during the time of the Israelites. Northern and southern kingdom were together. So he knew what the Israelites looked like. So why is he saying, who are these? Because the northern kingdom don't look the same as they did back in those days. You don't think Ezra knows who his people are? What they look like? But after the Assyrian captivity, the people changed. And so now he's looking in the future and he's seeing that the 10 tribes are no longer looking like the 10 tribes, right? They are, they are of a mixed multitude now. They look different now. Ezra didn't know. But during the time of Ezra and Nehemiah, he knew who these people were. That's why he's out in the streets teaching them, right? So this is a vision that he saw. The, Israel, the children of Israel here come from dark brown to light brown, different shades of brown, all right? This is the book of Revelation, chapter 6 and verse 14. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places, and the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bond man, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come and who shall be able to stand? That goes with wisdom of Solomon chapter five. The heathen are gonna be sad when they see us get taken up. They're gonna be like, oh my gosh, how's he numbered amongst the children of Israel? All right, that goes right along with Wisdom chapter 5. You had a precept before I go? This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, verse 27. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will sow the house of Israel and the house of Judah with the seed of man and with the seed of beast. This is a prophecy. This is why the northern kingdom looked different from the southern kingdom now. But they're still Israel, okay? The Israelites, this is strictly for the Israelites. And the Israelites are going to come in different shades of brown. Right. You got a question now? I got a question. My, my, brother want, my brother right here, he wants to know where can he get a pure Ethiopian Bible? We don't deal with Ethiopian right. Bibles. You talking about like a keeper in the guts? You want to keep in the guts? We don't, we don't deal with Ethiopian Bibles for the simple fact they're not our people. The Ethiopians come out the line of him. Uh, when you read... So if you read your Bible, the tenth chapter. Yeah, get that. I showed him. I showed him how. Yeah, the tenth chapter of the Bible is dealing with every nation on the earth. And when you read about the Ethiopians, they come out the same line as Nimrod. Nimrod was a Kush, a Kushite. The Ethiopians, a Kush. If you ask the Ethiopian, you like, are you Habisha or are you a Kushite? They'll tell you, yes, I am a Kushite. The Ethiopians and the Arabians are the only two people other than the so-called white man that know exactly who they are, according to the Bible. It's us. We don't know who we are. The Chinese and Japanese don't know who they are. The Mexicans don't know who they are, right? But they know who they are. They go all the way back. But we know who we are. That's why we're here now, explaining it to you. 
we're the Israelites. We're the children of Israel based on the curses in Deuteronomy 28. So we don't deal with the Ethiopian book because all through history, they have always wanted to be like us. They have always tried to claim our heritage as Israelites. And that's what you see with Haley Selassie. You know, you see uh, brothers and be like, well, he came from Solomon. There's nowhere in the scriptures where it says that Haley Selassie is going to come from Solomon. Or that a seed of Ethiopia was going to come from the king of, so uh, king of Israel, which was Solomon. It's nowhere in the scriptures. It is in the Cuban. I've been to Ethiopia, brother, so that's why I know. But um, when you look at the scriptures, it's nowhere in there. All right? Now, they talk about that they had the book of Enoch when you go to Ethiopia. They said that it was left there for them in the place called Aksum. That is the capital of Ethiopia. One of the 46 villages. Right. But that is the capital of Ethiopia. Aksum. From there, you can see the Red Sea. I've been there. All right? And you, they, they try to say that, okay, Solomon did come there to talk to Queen of Sheba because in Aksum is where Queen of Sheba li uh, lived. Right? And so they try to say, well, okay, this is how it happened. But it's not in the scriptures. All right? The lineage of King Solomon lay with Rehoboam and Jeroboam in, in 2 Kings chapter 12. And it went from there. Now he had, Solomon had children everywhere. No doubt. He had 700 wives and he had over a thousand concubines. And he fathered every one of them. I mean, he had babies with every one of them. Who's we'll say there's other seeds out there. But according to the Bible, it's not in there. So we stick with the scriptures. All right. This is the book of Zonder Van's Compact Bible Dictionary. We're going to read this. I think he already heard. So this is a famous white scholar who's dead now, but his books are all in these theology schools. Now, listen closely to what he says, and why would he say what he's saying about us? This is the definition of the name Ham. Now, Ham was one of the three sons of Noah. Out of those three sons, the whole world was populated from Ham, Shem, and Japheth. We're not Hamitic, as, as he's going to read. The youngest son of Noah, born probably about 96 years before the flood, and one of eight persons to live through the flood. He became the progenitor. The progenitor means the first. Ham was the first to produce these seeds. He became the progenitor of the dark races. So he knows that Ham is black, right? This is a scientist. He knows that Ham is black and all his children are black. Come on. Not the Negro. Not the what? Not the Negro. So that tells you that we're not of Ham, but that also tells you that all the people of the earth were of dark complexion. All of them. Japheth, Japheth was who the Samoans, the Tongans, they come out of Japheth. They were up north. The white man ran them out of the north. All right? Europe. Come on. Europe. But the Egyptians, uh -huh. Ethiopians, uh -huh. Libyans, uh -huh. and Canaanites. Uh -huh. His so these people, read it, read it again. He became the progenitor of the dark races. What? Not the Negroes, <laughs> what? but the Egyptians. But the Egyptians. Ethiopians. The Ethiopians. Libyans. Libyans. And Canaanites. And Canaanites. Nelson Mandela came from the Canaanites. All right? So those are the sons of Ham, not the Negroes. So we can prove to you that the Negroes came out of Shem. Right. Right? So when you read about Abraham, Abraham was a dark black man. Give me that. Stand up. Give me um, Genesis. Give me 15 and 13. 15 and 13. Give me that. Nature knows the color line. So, I'm going to show you something, brother. He's going to show you when, when God told Abraham that his seed was going to be afflicted 400 years. I'm talking about this time around. 400 years being in America. And like I said, so, I'm going to have the brother read this verse. Read this. This is Genesis 15 and 13. Huh? And he said unto Abraham, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger 
in a land that is not theirs. Right, so he said that his seed, Abraham's seed, not Canaanite, not Ham, not Ethiopia, but he said the seed of Abraham will be a stranger in a land that is not theirs. Come on. Right. Uh, the, thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, uh -huh. and shall serve them, and shall afflict, and they shall afflict them 400 years. We've been here how many years? 398. Now 398, if you go by 1619, which was the last declaration showing that the slaves were uh, brought here to the Americas. So it's been 398 years. So this parable was not towards the uh, Israelites who were in Egypt because they weren't in Egypt 400 years. All right? During the time of Joseph, to the time of, um, uh, from the time of Jacob and to the time of Joseph. That was only like 70 years he was in Egypt. And then a Pharaoh came after Joseph died and said he knew not of Joseph. It was only like 200 years. So it was 200 years in Egypt and then it was 200 years a lot of the Israelites were in Canaan. So it wasn't 400 years unless you take those two and put them together. Okay? Two different nations had us but not just the Egyptians. So this parable is talking about now. We've been in this land, a stranger to this land. We knew not of America, right? This is a new foul land. Now this is a book called um, Nature Knows No Color Line. You ever heard of this? By J.A. Rogers. He was a famous black scholar in the early 1900s. How can I buy that book? You can go on Amazon and purchase it. Or you can go to Marcus, um, Marcus Bookstore. It's the old school, that's the old school. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So read this for me. Same thing. It's the same thing. He just got the old school cover. Mm. Uh, read that part. Read the highlighted part. So I'm gonna have his brother read this for you so you can hear it. Turn the page. Now. Page 123. Section 31. Especially dark were the Jews of Spain. Were the what? The Jews of Spain. So we were in Spain too. Black people. But we were called Jews then. We weren't called Negro or African American really until we came to the Americas. But we were called Negro. All right? I'm going to have a brother read that too. Read that real quick. Go to the Bible. We'll come right back to that. Read Acts 13 and 1. Check this out. This is in the Bible. The book of Acts, chapter 13, verse 1. Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers. Now, if you read the Bible, you understand the Bible. The only people that could be prophets in the Bible were Israelites. Muhammad, that's an Arabian, could not be a prophet in the Bible. Only Israelites could be prophets. Okay, come on. As Barnabas, verse 1, Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers. So at Antioch, that was Turkey over there in the Middle East. Go ahead. As Barnabas and Simeon, that was called Niger. They were called what? Niger. Now, Niger, when you look it up on the Bible Dictionary, uh, was that that app that you got? What's it called? The Blue Letter Bible. Or a sword, Eastwood. If you look up that word Niger in the pronunciation, it was called Niger. Right? Or Negro is the same thing. It's the same principle. Right? So that's in the Bible. Yeah, it says Niger. Niger. Yeah, Niger. And Lucius of Cyrene. Right. And Menaean, so, which had been quick. brought up with Herod the Tetrarch. Right, so in the Bible, these prophets who were Israelites, these prophets who were black men, these Israelites, they were called nigger. Right? So, so, I mean, they use it here in slang towards us to make us look bad, but really, it's who we were. That was our complexion. We were different from the Hamites. There was just a little slave word that came with the Jews, right? Now read that, we're going back to this book. Especially dark were the Jews of Spain and Portugal. The Portuguese Jews were very dark, says Pritchard. Section 32. So dark were the Jews, especially of Portugal and southern Spain, that many whites th thought all Jews were black or dark. See that? So the Jews always have been us. If you look at how society is running today, they make money off of blacks 
and Mexicans more than they do any other people, right? You look at the, the TV programs, you look at the sports stations, right? They'll look at you, and you could be wearing something tight, and your muscles could be showing a so-called white man or a Mexican, or not a Mexican, but a Chinese man might come up to you and be like, do you play football at your age? That's hatred towards you. Don't you know that? That's disrespect. They shouldn't be doing that to us. Right. But that's because we fell up under the curses. We're in a land that is not ours, in a strange land, serving captivity. And the Most High said this is where we would be. You know? And be looked at to scorn in any way and every way that we do. No matter what kind of education we got, you know, we always going to be looked at that way. Paul, even Paul, like when you read the scriptures, you read that Paul in the book of Romans where he's talking about boast not against the natural branches. You know that at that time it was people that was calling themselves Jews that wasn't actually Jews, but they was they was they was converts. So they they converted to what we believed in. We the Jews, the real Jews. That's why Paul said boast not against the natural branches, against the natural Jews. All right, so I mean you searching for an Ethiopian Bible, I mean, I hope we gave you enough to understand that ain't our Bible. You know, the keeping the gods, I mean, Bob Marley talked about, Bob Marley was not a black man, if you if you didn't know. His father was white. His father was white. It was based on the seed of your father, right. not your mother. So, I mean. What, what about the Japher and the Canaanites? Say that again? Japher and the Japher. Canaanites. Japher? They don't fight with us? And it, no, the Canaanites should tell you, we just read Canaanites are from the seed of Ham. The Hamites. You mentioned Shem. Shem yes, is us. So well, three brothers, I always remember in the book of Genesis, Noah had three sons. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. That's we come from Shem. Well, how come we don't have a Bible on Shem? Well, we can study a Bible. Is this this is, is our Bible. It was stolen yeah, from us. Bible is on Shem. It's about Shem. It's all about Shem. This is all about us. This is our history. I mean, it's got, not a, you got a lot of different this, holy Bibles. It's not a boat. It's not so, a boat. so what we use is the 1611 King James Bible. That's the best thing for us because it keeps every it keeps the color in there. If you get an NIV, it takes the color out. NIV, hold on. NIV takes verses out as well. Okay, so we use the 1611 because not only that, it shows the migration of the ten tribes, which are the Puerto Ricans, the Cubans, the Dominicans. All of those brothers, the Mexicans, how they got to the South Americans and became Aztecs and Incas, it shows their migration. They were dark people like us too. But prior to them coming here, they left a captivity in the Middle East called the Assyrian captivity. So they were, you know, the, um, what do you call it? Exchanging of faces, what do you call it? Of faces. Um, confusion, of confusion of faces took place when we were in captivity. Just like in this captivity, this confusion of faces. When you look at Vanessa Williams, you know it's a sister, but you're like, what do you mix with? You know? Eddie Berry, what do you mix with? You know? No, she's a sister. You know what I mean? That's how the Mexicans are. They brothers and sisters. You know what I mean? They, they just been mixed. Confusion of faces. But it's based on your father. So that's the history of our people. Now, the so-called white man, when you look at how he studies, he says, oh, it's based on your mother. Now, that just, just, that just messes everything up. Brings total confusion. Right? Go to Matthew chapter 101. Let me show you something in the Bible concerning how we're supposed to look at things. And you got Job 8 and 8? Look at that. Hold on. This is the book of Job, chapter 8, verse 8. Now, this is in the Old Testament. Come on. For inquire, I pray thee, Job, of the. Chapter yeah, eight. Job, chapter 8 and 8. So say that again. For inquire. Inquire means a question. I pray thee, uh -huh. of the former age. Of the what? Of the former age. So to look in our, in our past, like Alex Haley did. Not on our mother's side, but on our father's side. A lot of us don't know who our father is. Go search. They got senses. You know, that's why Esau has a, a so-called white man has all these all these vices now. Well, you go to, you can go do a search. Not a DNA search, because the DNA is not accurate. But a search. And prepare thyself to the search of their fathers. Search of the what? Of their fathers. Oh, your mother. Of their fathers. Of their fathers. Now the Jewish people go by their mother. But the Israelites, our people, we supposed to go by our father. Okay? Read that, Matthew 1 and 1. It's the book of Matthew, chapter 1 and verse 1. one? The book of the generations of Yahweh Shai Christ. Now, this is the book of generations of who the world calls Jesus Christ. 
Now they say that it was a virgin birth, right? But if it was a virgin birth, what? You wouldn't even have to have the generations of Christ. Come on. To be prince over my people Israel, I have been with you wherever you have gone, and have destroyed all the enemies in your path. I will make you a great name among the great ones of the earth. I will assign a place for my people in Israel. There I will plant them, and they shall dwell in their own land.